All right. Well, I, I don't really like speaking about my, myself much, so I'll make this uh, less painful and just while, uh, let you guys know about how I manage my diabetes with the sport. Uh, my, again, my name is Sean Busby. I'm a professional snowboarder. I have type 1 diabetes, and I was diagnosed at the age of 19, and I'm currently 26. So to kind of backtrack a little bit, um, take you to my life before I was diabetic. Well, I grew up completely healthy, free of any sort of condition or disease. Never knew really what it was like to go and spend much time at a doctor's office. I started snowboarding when I was about 12 years old. And I quickly excelled at the sport. And by the age of 14, I began competing and picking up my first sponsors. And then by the age of 16, I went professional. And during high school, I relocated up to Whistler, British Columbia, Canada to train with members of the Canadian National Snowboarding Team. And following graduation, I then relocated down to Steamboat Springs, Colorado to train with members of the U.S. team. Now, when I relocated down to Steamboat Springs, I was about 19 years old, and that's when I began to notice, well, at that time, I did not know that it was symptoms of diabetes, but that's when I began, began to have my first symptoms of the disease. I noted that I was constantly tired. Um, it was always a chore trying to get out of bed in the morning, and I was becoming extremely thirsty as well. It got to a point where I was at the U.S. National Championships in Breckenridge, Colorado, where after my competition, I began vomiting um, constantly, and I could not stop. At the time, my parents were living in California, and the following day, I was supposed to be flying out to Quebec up in Canada for uh, the Canadian National Championship. And I just did not feel 100%. So I was talking to my parents back in California saying, hey, something's wrong. Can you guys help me out? I think I need to go get to a hospital. And like I said, I've never really spent much time in a hospital. I've always been healthy. So we just figured we'd wait, see how it goes the next day, see how I was feeling. The next day, I was feeling fantastic. So I went up to Canada, I had a successful competition at the Canadian National Championship, and I came home. It was around later March, early April, when I came back to Steamboat Springs, Colorado, and I had spring training in session. I uh, remember after every single training session that I would go to the grocery store and buy these giant gallon jugs of grapefruit juice. Um, so when I came back, I was looking at it as, okay, it's springtime, so I'm really thirsty. That's why I'm drinking these giant gallon jugs of grapefruit juice, uh, not knowing otherwise. And uh, then it got to the point where after every meal I ate, I began to vomit again. Looking back at things now with this diagnosis, I know that it was ketoacidosis. And um, I remember looking at the clock. I was laying on the couch in my living room after, after dinner one night and knew that within two hours I would be vomiting again. And I thought, wow, I really have a bad bug. But it got to the point where it was almost every two hours after every meal that I ate, I'd be throwing up. So I became afraid to eat because I did not like that sensation. And um, I ended up going to the emergency room. At, the, at this time, a lot of my teammates were returning back from the World, World Cup competitions in Japan um, and in Europe, and they were also extremely ill. So I just figured, oh, I caught some weird bug from them from while they were on the road. So when I went into the emergency room, they said, oh, yeah, you just got a bad stomach bug. They gave me some, me some anti-nausea medicine, sent me home. The process repeated. I came back in to the emergency room. They gave me some more medicine. They noted that my blood sugars were high, but they didn't put two and two together. So they gave me more medication to help with uh, the vomiting and sent me on my way. I ended up going to the hospital close to about seven or so times within a week and a half. Finally, I scheduled a doctor's appointment. I went into the doctor's office. The doctor came in, took one look at me, and instantly admitted me into the hospital. I was then in the hospital for roughly, I think it was nine days, um, being treated in the ER room with 
due to my insurance, at that time I was on my parents' insurance, and that insurance only works 30 miles outside of California since they lived in California. Being in Colorado, the hospital could only stabilize me. So once I was stabilized, it took them nine days to stabilize me. I had also developed a severe case of pneumonia from all the vomiting. Um, I was sent out to California for further testing. Now it was out in California where I experienced one of the worst tests in my life. Now being freshly out of high school and kind of in my first intro years to college, um, I went through this, what I'll call an exam, called the glucose tolerance test. For someone I would say that they suspect to have type 1 diabetes, I do not recommend the glucose tolerance test. So I remember drinking that syrup and they gave me my first blood draw within a half an hour and then I don't remember anything else. I basically passed out and woke up at the end. They sent me home to my parents' house. They said they would have the results within 24 hours. And the next morning a nurse called and said, Hello, uh, Sean, you don't have diabetes, there's nothing wrong. So a good friend of our family's, he was a cardiologist, he was kind of following the case, and he, he, he said, that doesn't sound right. So he asked for my family and I to go down to the doctor's office and ask for a hand copy of the results so he could take a look. So let me remind you, again, I grew up 19 years free of any disease. The only thing I ever had to worry about was an occasional pimple or if a girl liked me. So this was all foreign. <clears throat> so we picked up that result and we noted that there was flags next to all the result, results indicating high, 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 high. We saw a nurse walk by, we showed this paperwork to the nurse asking what does this mean? She said, let me go get your doctor. Doctor came out, he said, Sean, sorry, I actually haven't seen these results. I don't know why you got a call, but you have diabetes. So he brought me into his office and he goes, now don't worry, Mr. Busby, I've dealt with plenty of type 2 diabetics in my life. Here's what you need to do. So I was diagnosed at that time with type 2 diabetes. It was actually a misdiagnosis, primarily because of my age. And so I was put on pills, and I went three months on, on pills, and I did not get any better. I lost about 30 pounds of weight within two weeks. Uh, I was down to 119 pounds. And while all my teammates back in Colorado were starting to head down to the Southern Hemisphere for training, I was wasting away on my parents' couch. So, <laughs> so as a, an independent young adult, I was now back at my parents' house, living on the couch, and going into the summer months wearing nothing but sweatpants and sweatshirts because my clothes no longer fit me. As I said, while my teammates were training, starting to go down in the Southern Hemisphere, I was wasting away. And my sponsors did not like that. So a lot of my sponsors began to drop me from their teams. And as a snowboarder, I depended heavily on my sponsors for financial support for, to allow me to continue training towards my dreams. So I went three months on these pills and I felt worse and worse every day, always going to, in the ketoacidosis, always vomiting after meals, afraid to eat. Finally I got one last burst of inspiration where I wanted to, I was like, no, this isn't me. I, I'm sick of losing my sponsors, I'm sick of allowing my body to do this to me. I want to get back out to Colorado and get training again. So I attempted to get on an airplane in California and as I got on that plane I nearly passed out. Once that happened, I was taken to a teaching hospital in, in, uh, at UCI Irvine in California and was given finally the proper diagnosis of type 1 diabetes, which also happened to be on my mother's birthday. And that first shot of insulin was absolutely the most amazing feeling in the world. I had just gone three months or more wasting away, just allowing my body to basically kill me slowly, and now one single shot of insulin made me feel like a human being again. So I went home to go and learn about this disease and what it meant. And I, was, I had many questions. I went and explored all the online resources, such as what the ADA offers, and 
want to see what it meant to be a young adult with type 1 diabetes. Now more specifically, what about an athlete? Can I continue being a snowboarder at a professional level? Can I still get back to myself? Now I, I noticed that were, there were plenty of a, other athletes out there that had type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes. And I knew that, okay, they, they figured it out, so so could I. Now I tried to look to see if there were any other snowboarders at that time, and I, I couldn't find any or any other winter sports athletes. Now there are plenty, and so I'm glad that those resources are all available. So in addition to this, at a time where I started losing all my sponsors and was kind of thinking maybe I should quit the sport, but now I have the proper diagnosis and I feel like a human again, I read these stories of these five-year-olds these 13-year-olds and these 15-year-olds that knew life no different than to have diabetes their entire life. Again, here I was, 19 years old, and I grew up free of any disease. And I had my head way up in the clouds. And diabetes helped ground me, and I appreciated what it did for me. And looking at these, reading these stories of these kids that knew life no different, I never had to have my parents come over and test my blood sugar when I was sleeping over at a friend's house. I never had to go on a first date and tell my girlfriend why I have to give myself an insulin shot in the middle of a meal. But they did, and that inspired me. So it inspired me to continue and try to go on and figure out my, get back onto my career as far as a professional snowboarder. So within a couple of months, I was back on snow again, and I had to learn everything again about my body. So I was constantly checking my blood sugars, constantly you know, giving myself carbohydrate if I needed to, giving myself insulin when I needed to, and just trying to learn as much about it and document it. And since I was so inspired by everyone else that has type 1 and type 2 diabetes, I wanted to be able to give back to them for inspiring me to continue on with my life. So within a couple months after my diagnosis, I created a, set, a series of snowboarding and ski camps called Riding on Insulin. And riding on insulin is a foundation where I take children, teens, and young adults with type 1 and type 2 diabetes up into the mountains around the world and teach them how to snowboard and ski while managing their blood sugars where altitude, humidity, and climate play a role. At the same time, we have nurses and doctors that come out and volunteer their time as, as well. So we provide this safety net where everyone can feel like being a kid again and allow us to, to give all the participants a vacation from their disease. So since then I've held camps in Wisconsin, California, Utah, um, Oregon, as well as New Zealand and Idaho. And um, I would like to show a video about these camps.